Hey, what is going on guys? So the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam is on the way. When it was first announced, I wanted to make a video just talking about the announcement of it, just basically kind of like a mini Gumpla News type of video. Uh, but then I just kind of forgot about it and there was other stuff going on, but now recently we've got some more information about the release date and the price and stuff for it. Uh, and so I just basically want to make a kind of reaction video talking about my thoughts about the kit, what I think we can expect from the kit, things to look forward to about it, concerns that we might have about it, or just what we might expect because we still don't know necessarily all the details of exactly everything that's going to come in the box or things like that. So I just wanted to make this video to talk a little bit about the new Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam because it's obviously kind of big news in the world of Gunpla. So let's get into it here on the Gundam Info page. They have a, their own dedicated page here dedicated to this so I thought that when the announcement first came out they thought that I remember them mentioning that it was going to be coming out in the spring of this year but it definitely seems to be pushed back as the release date is now set for this is uh, November of this year which I think that probably means we'll be getting it here in the US probably in December hopefully they'll send it out early but I imagine that we're probably not going to get this in November, but it'll probably be December, which means it's going to be a nice Christmas gift for everyone. But obviously here the main highlight is that it's the highest metal expression in the history of Gunpla. So they're really banking on the gold frame of this as being kind of the main feature of it. If we go down here a little bit more, you can see that that's the extreme point. So you have the gimmick, the style, action, the internal structure, and the extreme point being a separate point on their little infograph here. I've always thought that the extreme point is really kind of more of the gimmick. I don't know how they clarify like a gimmick being different from the extreme point on these kits as the gimmick kind of is the extreme point anyway but they could almost make the extreme points going down to the internal frame also because that's where the extreme point is on the internal frame but anyway it says here that the Master Grade Extreme is a Master Grade high-end brand that pursues the extreme expression of the mobile suit under a certain theme for by combining the culmination of Bandai Spirits technology and different media, uh, different materials. So yeah, it's a little bit uh, kind of strangely worded there, but basically Bandai wants to flex their muscles, show what they can do uh, with the limits of their technology, and obviously it's going to be very good. So we have a video here that I do want to look at. So this is the promo video. So this is what came out like first, like a month or two months ago. It seems like it came out a long time ago now at this point, but I do want to take a look at the video because the video uh, is pretty impressive. And I'll just go ahead and narrate this too. Our goal is to splash you with gold. <laughs> the highest metal expression in the history of Gunpla. Interesting it's not in quotation marks here, but it is on the website. Extreme metallic combination. MGEX. More gold splashing here on you. What is a Master Grade Extreme? That's basically what we just read there. <coughs> <laughs> Master, sorry, sorry guys, it's from all the gold splashing. This really choked me up. All right, let's continue on here. So yeah, like we talked about, the main gimmick is gonna be the frame, and that's kind of really what this video is showing off, is just all about the frame for the most part. Experience, it's gold. I like how they had to put gold in quotation marks so nobody thinks that, we don't want you to think it's any actual gold in there, we just want you to know that it's just gold in quotation marks. So starting off with the copper gold coating here, basically it's gonna be like with the Perfect Grade Unleashed, where you've got multiple layers of different gold where you had like the gold injected parts and the coated parts and the different sprayed parts on there so you got a copper gold coating as your kind of base parts inside of there you got some of those you got the white gold coating parts in there which those I think are probably going to be plated parts it looks like uh, yellow gold coating so I mean these are all plated I guess I should say but the white gold I believe is probably going to be like electroplated where these other golds are going to be uh, coated but not that like super shiny electroplating you know so you got the yellow gold and then metallic molding colors you've got more of that that's going on in there and that looks like it's like a silver and maybe a different type of silver and again just like with the perfect grade unleash we've got the addition of some etching stickers which are just the photo etch parts that you're gonna be able to stick on there basically just in the chest and around in the legs there a little bit and up to six patterns of metallic expression so that means in certain areas of the kit you're gonna have up to like in one area you're gonna have like up to six in some areas it might just be two or three or four different metallic parts like in the same area but in some areas you'll have up to six different types of uh, metallic coated parts all in the same area which is pretty impressive I gotta say that's a lot of metallic stuff going on to this and you can get an idea of why it's gonna be costing as much as it is because it's gonna be costing you know 160 170 180 dollars depending on where you're able to get it 
new armor effects that boost the metallic expression of the internal frame. So here's an interesting point that I want to bring up about this just because here you can see it's got this clear part there for the side of the arm which does look very cool but they're making it look like it lights up here and it says the red clear parts have been adapted and the structure results in larger gaps between the armor parts to emphasize the expression. So basically they want to leave more gaps in the armor to show more of the frame which I understand and this clear red part is also going to show more of the frame underneath because it's a clear part but they're making it kind of look like it's lit up by an LED which unfortunately it's not and so far I've not seen anything about this that shows that it's actually got an LED inside or any sort of LED system inside so that's one thing that I'm uh, waiting to find out if there is going to be at least like a LED gimmick that you can put in the head to make the, like the eyes light up or something. I've not seen anything yet about that. It's also showing the clear part there in uh, the waist section and the tops of the shoulders. The tops of the shoulders is interesting. On the waist and like on the side of the arms and everything I can understand that the tops of the shoulders is a bit weird. I hope that they also give you an opaque part for that as well because I don't necessarily know if I really like the clear part on the tops of the arm that make it sort of look like a pat or like a police kind of uh, lights there on the shoulders it's kind of weird. I think it'll probably end up looking cool, but I do hope that they do give you the option of a, an opaque red part as well, but I, I'm not sure. I kind of doubt it. Sophisticated articulation and style created through a combination of armor. So yeah, here we got to look at what the actual full kit is going to look like when it's all built up. And as you can see, most of that awesome, shiny, multiple different gold, uh, different colors and everything that you have there for the inner frame is going to, of course, mostly be covered up by all the armor. So hopefully they they do include some kind of system that will allow you to I mean honestly the best way would have been for them to make this include more kind of uh, open hatch kind of stuff like we had with the PG Unleashed kit but it doesn't look like there's gonna be a whole lot of open hatch gimmicks with this also another option would be to have like a uh, base sort of like with the perfect grade GPO one uh, that has like this base that kind of wraps around it and you can maybe like detach some of the armor parts and like have them like included on the base in some way so it looks like a, it's in like a hanger uh, but that also doesn't seem like that's going to be the case so if you really want to show off the inner frame you're basically just going to have to like leave parts of armor off of this which I think is probably what we're going to see a lot of people doing with this. I will say that just the, the, the mold of this does look really good it really reminds me a lot of the perfect grade uh, strike uh, kind of the perfect grade perfect strike that they came out with where they up updated the, the style, the design of the armor, made it kind of a bit more sharp and edgy kind of design. That looks like what they've gone with uh, with this. So here it says the head uh, has three movable axes, which is quite impressive. That should make for a very nice head articulation there. Uh, articulation gimmicks in the armor on the arms. That also looks very nice. How they basically have a, the a gauntlet piece on the side of the arm is basically attached like kind of as yeah, a wrist joint and you've got kind of joints in between so that'll move really nicely. Articulation gimmicks in the torso, waist, that all looks pretty good. Interlocking legs articulation gimmicks. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by interlocking but basically it looks like it's got really nice leg articulation that it can kneel down fully like that and there's just a lot of articulation in the legs which you would expect from basically what is essentially like a 2.0 master grade of the Strike Freedom Gundam here that we're getting with this. Interlocking mechanisms in the armor and vernier verniers there on the back of the legs the shoulders so yeah again it's just got a lot of a ton of articulation in there uh, there in the legs the hip joint does look very similar to the 2.0 freedom Gundam which makes sense uh, just make sure that you know you're careful with that ankle sliding gimmicks there yeah so that all looks very cool the weapons of course your rifles can mount together to make the long-range beam rifle that looks very cool. Rail cannons on the hips open up and then you've got the beam sabers and beam shield. That beam shield effect part does look very nice. I don't know exactly how that's going to look on the actual kit because obviously what we're seeing here is just a render and so far I haven't seen any pictures of what that's going to look like as an actual part on the kit. But if it looks anything like this rendering with it being like kind of blue and purple there that does look very cool I gotta say. And we're getting to the end of the video here as it's just kind of showing you a like all of the gold plated parts and then it kind of just adds the armor onto there just to give you an idea uh, it's a cool just kind of 360 spin here of all the different parts of the kit and then of course you get that final flash of gold so yeah so there you have it that's the promo video guys a ton of gold going on there with that it's just splashing you with all the gold all over the place 
Uh, before we get into the uh, the rest of just kind of the dedicated side here, a couple things. So notice that they didn't mention anything about the dragoons, which is kind of a big part of the Strike Freedom's design. It's got the whole dragoons. I would imagine there's probably going to be some sort of set that's coming out that's going to be an effects part set for this that will hold the dragoons, and that'll probably give you some like beam effect parts and stuff like that that'll be coming out as probably a P Bandai expansion set for this. Also, notice they didn't mention anything about any sort of display base for this at all, which obviously the Masquerade Extreme. Unicorn Gundam had its own dedicated display base which was technically kind of a lot of recycled parts from the previous MS Cage version of the Unicorn Gundam but I do wonder what kind of display base is going to be included with this kit. I am worried that it's going to be basically something just kind of very simple which I guess is fine as or in a way to keep the cost of the kit down because with all that plating on there uh, plated runners do make the cost of a kit usually skyrocket and so adding more stuff into that just means it's just going to add more and more to the cost. So in order to keep the cost of the kit relatively down, uh, omitting stuff like effect parts and base parts, things like that, I can understand why they kept that out, but those also would be really nice to have in there. I don't think it would really add all that much to the cost, but or any kind of a display base for this. So uh, before we go through the rest of the website here, I do want to take a quick break to have a snack because I've got this here, which is a box from Tokyo Treat. So if you guys are interested in Japanese snacks from Japan, of course we all love Japan. Being a fan of Gundam, you probably like stuff from Japan. And unfortunately for a lot of us, the past couple of years, uh, we've not been able to travel to Japan. I've been very depressed about it. So this was a really awesome opportunity for me. So Tokyo Treat reached out and wanted to send me a box uh, this to share with you guys. As you can see, mine's even kind of like busting at the seams because there's so much stuff in here. So if you guys don't know, this is a monthly subscription box you can get and there'll be a link down in the video description below. If you guys are interested and you go there and use my link, it helps me out. So that'd be awesome if you guys want to sign up for this. But I've seen videos where they uh, actually break down the contents of this and like c cost compare it. And basically if you were to just go out and buy all the contents of the, you, these boxes just on your own, um, it would be more expensive, so getting box uh, subscriptions like this is actually cheaper than just going out and buying all this stuff on your on your own. So if you're interested in getting some stuff like this, let me go ahead and show you guys what is going to be inside here. So when you first open it up, there's Bite into Japan. Uh, so this usually has a book in here like this, which we'll take a look at here in just a second, and then a drink, which in this case is caramel popcorn soda, which sounds awful but I have a feeling that it's actually gonna be probably pretty good. So I wanna try that. Uh, I actually would prefer to try it cold, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna try it at room temperature today. So this is the Snackin Shibuya Tokyo Treat. So this is the book that you get included with each one. And basically what this does, it tells you uh, a little bit about each of the things that are included in here. So this is the volume 79 for June 2022, as you can see on there. And this book, of course, is backwards because it's Japanese. And in here, like, it'll show you a breakdown of everything that's included in this box. And then it gets into next stop, Shibuya. That's pretty cool because this particular box is a Shibuya themed. It's got some information there about Shibuya, which is pretty cool. There's a Shibuya's coffee culture. I do love coffee, so I do kind of wish that, that uh, the drink was somehow coffee related, but I think Let's see, none of the snacks are coffee related either, it looks like, unfortunately. But uh, I guess because they send this stuff out, so I don't know if there's anything that like, has like actual coffee in it, it might not be good for kids or something like that. Mannequin cookies and cream waffle. So basically you just have a breakdown, like I said, information about all this stuff. It does also tell you about the allergens and things that it may contain in case you have any food allergies or things like that, if it's suitable for vegetarians. All that stuff it tells you here in the book about each of the snacks. That's pretty cool. And the other nice thing about this is that it's a good reference that like if you had this snack, for example, the Puka Puka Thai uh, lemonade fish there, if you really, really like that snack and you say you wanted to order more of it, then you could go out and you could order some more. You could order like 10 boxes of this or something like that. I want to start off with this because it's right on the top. Now this is uh, Kit Kat. I do believe there's something Kit Kat related in every box. This one though, is pudding and I love Japanese pudding. Every time I go to Japan, I probably eat one pudding every day. Let's go ahead, I just wanna open this to see what's inside here. So, oh, okay. It's actually a bag of many 
Kit Kats in here, but there's, uh, let's see, about 10 of them in here. There you go, pudding Kit Kat. Like I said, I love pudding, so with something pudding flavored, I'm all for that. What? Yo, mm, it is so good. I so wish that I could actually be visiting Japan eating pudding. But I think this will be a really good combination with this popcorn soda because like really, the pudding is kind of really buttery flavor. And this caramel popcorn soda is also very really buttery. I'm expecting it to be anyway. Let's go ahead and try some. Ah, uh, mmm, yeah, basically uh, as I expected, it's kind of like cream soda, but yeah, with like a buttery taste to it, definitely. Mmm, uh, yeah, I don't know if I like that all that much. I think it would be better if it was cold, so I would recommend putting it in their fridge for a while before you drink it. I'll maybe go put it in the fridge before I finish the rest of that. Uh, it's alright, it's interesting, it's it, it definitely, it's caramel popcorn soda, exactly. If exactly how you would expect that to taste is how that tastes. You do also have some cup ramen included in here in this case, which is just basically spaghetti. Spicy Napolitan tomato pasta. It's a cola flavored candy. I'll probably give that to my kids. They'll love that. There's also cookie and cream waffles. This was the waffle that we saw in the book. And I do love waffles as well. And it's morning now actually, so it's a good time to eat a waffle. Waffle is like breakfast food for us Westerners, but in Japan, waffle is kind of like a dessert snack kind of thing. Oh yeah, it's very much dessert. It's like a, it's more of like a really soft cookie or donut kind of thing, more than like a, a, a waffle again, like as, we Westerners might think of a waffle. You got some, of course, corn soup snack, quattro cheese, these will be really good. I'll enjoy these with my wife, because my wife will like those as well. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff in here actually. <laughs> Look, these are some different assorted chocolates. There's like, uh, what are the flavors in here? Uh, strawberry, banana, matcha, and chocolate. Or this one's the lemonade flavor. And this book is, on, is honestly like a really great part of this. It might seem like just kind of a throwaway thing. You all want it for the snacks and this is just kind of something extra, but honestly as just like a reference thing, if you're into Japanese culture and stuff, there's good little bits of information, like I said, about the culture and about uh, the area of Shibuya. If you guys have never been to Japan, there's also a photo contest here in the back. So you can check that out and obviously a bunch more information on their website. I think you can see all the information about like what's in each package on the website as well. So check out the website, the link down below. Use my link in the video description. Again, that helps me out and my channel. Uh, I really like this actually. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know because I've been to Japan many times. So like the novelty of trying out different snacks and stuff, I, w I wasn't sure if, I was, if it was gonna be something that was really all that exciting for me. But honestly, it is really cool. Uh, there's a lot of really good stuff in there and I do love to snack. So while, you know, building or while I'm doing whatever. All right, let's get back to just finishing up the information here that we have about the extreme metal combination of the Strike Freedom Gundam. It really is interesting how they've essentially taken uh, the engineering that they put into the Perfect Grade Unleashed Arc 72 Gundam into a 100 scale Master Grade Gundam here by just having the multiple layers. Here you have the copper gold coating, coating white gold, yellow gold, metallic molding colors, two different colors of that, and then etching stickers on top of that. It's basically exactly what they did with the uh, Perfect Grade Unleashed Gundam, but just, uh, you know, to the extreme. That's the whole point of the line, right? So experience a simulation of the MS manufacturing process. So yeah, seeing the kit in its full like inner frame, of course, is kind of reminiscent of what the Gundam would look like as it's being built. Like if in like the anime or in real life, anyway, if it was being built, you know, they build the frame first and then put the armor on top of that. But that's not necessarily anything new. That's been like a thing to like experience as part of the building process ever since like master grades or like inner frames have been a thing. Anyway, but it does look very cool, I gotta say. Uh, just there's uh, some more images down here once you get close to the bottom, actually showing it like fully armored up where obviously the, the gimmick is a little bit lost, like I mentioned before. All that gold inner frame that you got going on 
uh, is lost a little bit now once you get into it being fully armored up. But all of the articulation, everything they're just showing off here once again, it looks like this is also going to have the same like uh, 3D stickers that it had, like with the again with the Perfect Grade Unleashed, how it had like those uh, green and red. Uh, like thicker stickers that you put in there basically to simulate like lights on the kit. So there's a breakdown of all of the points of articulation on there. It kneels very nicely so that all looks very cool of course but again not really anything here about the Dragoons. Well this is all of the part here. Here we go. The gold inner frame is also exposed when the Super Dragoons are released but that's basically all they're gonna mention about that because here we get into the weapons section and it talks about the beam rifles, the rail guns, the beam shield, and then you get into a gallery here and that's basically it so the uh, price tag for this 1400 yen I've seen uh, some people complaining about what the price is gonna be like here in the West with it being more around 170 180 dollars for the price tag here in the West and honestly for a kit like this I gotta say that price tag seems basically exactly what I would expect if you take the Japanese yen price to dollar ratio of basically any kit, uh, not even this one, but like just any kit, just take a kit, look at how much it costs in Japanese yen, or what the uh, suggested retail price is in Japanese yen, the MSRP, and then look at what the cost is usually like here in America, for example, it's pretty standardly about a 1.2 ratio. So for example, like a $100, a 100, one 10,000 yen kit would be like $120 here, for example, something like that. So um, the price for going from 14,000 yen to $180, again, is that seems about right. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I would expect. Just for people who did have their concerns thinking that, you know, it's a 14,000 yen kit, why doesn't it cost $140 exactly? Um, if you're wondering about that, that's uh, pretty normal. <laughs> uh, just the cost of... Uh, it's just this is like a whole other different video to go on and talk about and I do want to actually make a video to talk about this some more in more detail uh, but this is something that Adam and I have talked about a lot on the live streams that we do over on the USA Gundam TV channel which you guys should watch those if you don't because they're very informative I think uh, hopefully I, I even learn stuff from Adam sometimes while we're doing this but it's very informative for you guys as well to know about kind of what's going on with the with stuff but the cost of kits from Bandai, like for retailers like us, uh, the cost of kits is going up. Also, the cost of shipping for everything's going up. So, uh, with the prices of everything going up, that's uh, like I said, roughly 1.2 ratio of the Japanese yen price to the price of what we pay, like in dollars here in America, is uh, just kind of the way it is <laughs> for stuff here. So, if you want to be able to pick this up for exactly 14,000 yen or less, you're gonna have to go to Japan in that case. In Japan, they probably will be able to get it for like uh, uh, 13.6 or something like that, 13.5. They'll probably be able to get it for even less than 14,000 yen, which is great for them in Japan, but you know, uh, here on this side of the ocean, that's just not really a thing. But anyway, it's an awesome looking kit. I'm looking forward to it. I don't think it's gonna be around until Christmas time, so we have plenty of time uh, that we could see more information about this. Like I said, about some kind of stand or effect parts. I would imagine a lot of that's probably gonna be held off for exclusive release items that will gonna go along with this. But what are your guys' thoughts about the Mash Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam? I have to say, I was very surprised that this was what they chose. Um, it's not something that I would have expected. It makes sense that the extreme point is the inner frame, uh, but yeah, I've, I just wasn't expecting this at all. So is this something that you guys were expecting? Or not, or were you also equally caught off guard and kind of surprised by this announcement as I was? Uh, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you're excited about the kit, if you're planning on picking it up, or maybe waiting till it's released. Uh, the one thing about waiting till it's released with a kit like this, I gotta say, once it's released, I imagine you're probably gonna have a hard time getting it. So if you do wanna get the kit, I would highly recommend you guys to pre order. I know we have it on pre order now here at USA Gundam Store, but I'm not sure how long those pre-orders are gonna last. We have to put a limit on the pre-orders based on how many we're gonna actually get. So if you guys are interested in getting the kit, I would highly recommend you guys to pre-order it. You know, delays happen and stuff like that. You might not get it like on release day, but at least you'll be guaranteed to get one because once this is out, you know, it's gonna be sold out, I'm sure. And then it's not gonna be, this is not gonna be a kit that Bandai is going to reprint like every six months or something like that. This is gonna be a kit that uh, for Bandai is gonna be very costly to produce. And so I don't imagine it's gonna be reprinted very often. So if you wait and don't get one right away, you might be waiting for a long time or you're gonna end up 
being uh, paying some like extreme extreme scalping prices for this. So if you want to avoid that, I recommend you get you guys to pre-order. But uh, if you do want to wait until it comes out and you like start to see some reviews about it and stuff, I understand that as well. It's a big uh, expensive kit, so you may not want to spend the money unless you're really sure you want it. But let me know you guys' thoughts. Uh, again, the link to the pre-order for this at USA Gundam Store will be down in the video description below. The link to the Tokyo Treat sign up and information page will be down in the video description below. Again, thank you to them for reaching out to me. Thank you guys for uh, just kind of enduring me just uh, trying out some snacks. Honestly, uh, I did really enjoy that. <laughs> so I do really like that a lot. Uh, so that was a really nice break to just kind of uh, for me, and so I hope that you guys will check it out. But anyway, that's it for this video guys. I'm excited about the kit. It's gonna be a long wait for it to actually come out, but in the meantime, hopefully we'll get some more information about what else is gonna be included. But until then guys, I'll see y'all later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.